Today is Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Marquette Township Board. And I said it was 6.30, so we're gonna stand and say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Randy, please. Trustee LaRue. Here. Trustee Winslow. Present. Trustee Everson. Here. Trustee Marks. Present. Treasurer Johnson. Here. Clerk Retari is here and Supervisor Durant. Here. Staff present is Manager Kangas. Our attorney, Roger Zappa, is here. Um, Fire Chief Dan Shanahan is here. And on Zoom, our Superintendent of Public Works, Lenny Bodinas, is here. Okay, thank you. Go. Public comment. Ms. Sherry, please come up to the podium. Randy's checked the microphone, so yep, pull it down working. to you. Name and address, of course. You know the drill. <laughs> My name is Sherry Johnson. I live at 2272 Cherry Street, of course, in Marquette. Um, I'm concerned about the parking on Cherry between Erie and Ontario. Cars are parking on both sides of the street. It, ha it is a big hazard. One day I went home and cars were both parked. Um, a fire truck could not have gone through at all. Or maybe, I think the ambulance might have made it through very close, but that's a big concern. And a car was coming down from by the park on Cherry and people were coming around the park, the, um, the park car. That's a big problem with an accident. And this is what happened up on Erie and that's why Erie got closed. I don't want to see, of course, my street closed, but it would be nice to have parking only on one side of the street so this doesn't happen because we get a lot of traffic, a lot of walkers, we get a lot of bikers, we get moms pushing strollers. It's a very busy street for pedestrians and I hate to see an accident happen. And we have the disc golf there. And it's a very active street and I love it. I mean, I like listening to them over there playing golf and stuff, um, looking for their, their disc. So, but it, it ha the solution, there has to be a solution to this so nobody gets hurt. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, John, is that a road commission? Do we have any say in what happens there? I believe the township board may want to request no parking. I'm thinking the no parking being requested would be on the south side, the side that the houses are on, if I have, and then allow the parking on the park side, which would be the north side. If there is a request that comes from the township board, I'm sure they'll look at it, whether or not it happens. The last time I was involved at a township level with a no parking zone, they had Dan, Daniel Verlin from the state police come and do a traffic study. Um, I guess I'd have to verify with them. I don't know that you need to take action tonight. You have, you have another meeting in two weeks, so we could, or is it three weeks? Two. Oh. Um, we could bring it back to you then. This isn't the first time we've heard this concern in the last week, by the way. Oh. I believe one of Sherry's neighbors also called me late last week about the same concern, so we're aware of it. Um, Lenny and I were actually going to take a look at that today and just didn't get to it. So, okay. Um, actually, Lenny didn't even know that I was going to suggest it today. <laughs> so that one's on me. Okay. Well, if the staff can look at it in the next couple weeks and come back with some information, that would be helpful. Um, Pete, you were first, I think. Uh, Don, are you talking about parking on the north side or the south side? My suggestion would be if, if we're going to restrict parking, it be on the opposite side of Lions Field. So you can park on the side of the field itself. That's where the houses are. Huh. No parking on the house side. Okay, so you'd be parking on the south side. North side. North. Sherry lives at, where the, on, on Cherry. Yeah, where she, she's on Cherry. The houses are on the north side of the street. Okay, so I had it just the opposite. I, yeah. I was thinking Cherry was on the south side. I better learn these street names better. I've been here how long? 
Sorry, my bad. Randy? Actually, um, the parking isn't as bad on that side versus the other side because the other side's a lot worse because at least on the cherry side, you can pull into the field, you know, on the fence side there. Um, but on the south side, the, uh, the, the cars park on both sides, and you're absolutely right. I don't think you get a fire truck down that. No. And I was cre I don't think it's going to be much of a problem the rest of the summer with the ball games. It's, it's really it wasn't the ball games were going when it was really full. Community day probably will be full. Um, but I do understand your concern there because I drove up that street and yeah, I don't think you could fit even a car. I don't know. If there was another car coming. I don't know where we'd pull off to let each other go by there because it was just like this. So yes, one side of the street probably would be a good idea there. No. So, so I think um, if we're asking the Road Commission, and this is kind of following along the same lines but not the same street, there's a huge issue at Christmas time on Vandenboom. And so if I, I would recommend one side of the street. It's um, no fire trucks getting through that street, not even the ambulances, and it's winter. What's, why Christmas? because that's when the christmas decoration so event is open so they're driving you mean people are, or are they're they, parked they're on both sides oh, of the street okay. yeah and dan can um support that and dan shanahan can support that because um they've seen Very it too it's yeah i don't know you know if the road commission would allow us to do any of this but let's yes. give it a try yeah. let's see what they think anyway any other comment or response Okay, thanks. Good discussion. Let's see what we can find out. Now you'll have to come back in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll need approval of the consent agenda tonight. That includes approval of regular meeting minutes of July 5th, 2022. We have bills payable in the amount of $174,502.55. Uh, no other committee or reports. Uh, we have the U of M close-up report from this spring. I stuck in the packet for you to read. It says 62% of Michigan leaders say that the state is off on the wrong track. thought that was kind of interesting. That's the highlight of that. But there are links in there that you can uh, go see the whole report if you want to. We also have the Election Commission draft minutes of July 5th and special meeting draft minutes of July 8th for the Marquette County Solid Waste Management Authority. Uh, I also put in an abbreviated packet for their meeting tomorrow. Uh, there is a typo on page four. It says that Delta County is ready for August and Delta County is looking at something else. Uh, okay, it says they should start receiving Delta County recycling in August. We remember that they did have a contract with them. Work is also being done with outreach to Delta County. <laughs> so it should be Alger County. I, I emailed Brad and said, do I remember that you're working with Alger County? And he said yes. And I did also ask him why the um, uh, April's labor was so high. I asked him if maybe they had three payrolls, and they did. So the recycling financials, they lost almost $25,000 because of the extra payroll that month. So just a couple things to point out on, on that packet. We also have a budget amendment tonight, 2022-06, so we'll do a roll call vote on this, and we have the June financial statement, which also means we can start the budget process, which we will be doing. Anything that needs to be pulled out or approval? Move to accept the... Consent agenda. Consent agenda, as presented. Support. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Go ahead, Randy. All right, before I do roll call, the budget amendment 2206 is uh, authorization is requested to increase the general service administration, computer services of the general fund, actual cost of operating and maintaining the IT system as well as unexpected work will ne necessitate a budget increase. And it's $30,000. We were a little bit off on that budget. And there are a few items that came up and the manager can explain that if you have any questions, so. And roll call vote is Treasurer Johnson? Yes. Uh, Trustee Marks? Yes. 
Trustee LaRue? Yes. Trustee Winslow? Um, yes, can we ask the manager to explain that? Sure, when we get finished. Okay. Trustee Everson? Yes. Secretary is yes, and Supervisor Durant? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. John, you want to talk about the budget amendment? Yeah, so I think the first thing we're starting to see some correction in our budget with how certain invoices are recorded. That's part of the issue here. I asked Kim to look through uh, all of the various invoices that were allocated to um, general services admin under community or computer services. And there, there wasn't more than maybe one invoice that really stood out. It's just this is the cost of maintaining our IT systems now. That's the biggest problem. So next year's budget, you're going to see a higher number in that line item because we are correcting it based on the way we're recording these invoices now. Okay, so we're not really spending more money than we were last year? Uh, I think we are. Okay. But most of that is just your inflationary expectations based on the current economy. Um, but it's also correcting the way some of the invoices are being documented in the budget itself. Go ahead, Linda. So, so we'll discuss that more when we have um, our budget meeting. Correct. Yeah, so next year you're going to see a number probably closer to 50000 in our computer services line. Because my guess is that I'm looking at these computers are old and you know that we're gonna we need to start budgeting for replacing some computers yeah and I'm, I'm thinking if we're looking at at replacement of township board um, tablets computers whatever you want to call those it's sort of a hybrid machine right um, we would do that through the CIP because we'd be purchasing seven at, at one time yeah um, I think that's a big enough expense that we would it's probably going to be close to 15,000 for that these things aren't cheap anymore no and they certainly outdate quickly that's I think um, <laughs> what the computer industry has figured out right yeah mm -hmm. guarantee customers for life yeah just like the printer people okay anything else on that good thanks and we just need approval of the remainder of the agenda I'll make that motion I'll second Okay, I'm not aware of any conflicts of interest. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Are we going to add this or change at any point? Yeah, how did you didn't say how you wanted to talk? We can cover that during Lenny's report. Lenny's going to talk yeah, about okay. it? Okay. If that's okay with everyone. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay, staff reports. Let's start with the fire department. Uh, good evening. Um, not a whole lot in June, but I did do want to, because it's not in my notes, um, Deputy Vance in the mall parking lot getting that cleaned up. I don't know if she's the one who spearheaded it. We talked a few times about that, but those cars are gone. The mattress, I mean, we had discussed a few times what was going on, and we were going to help if, if it was needed, but they're gone and it was taken care of. But she does deserve a big thank you for that. Um, training, I'll get that real quick. Um, we did, for the first time in recent memory, um, we got to train with Nagani Township. We did some water supply with them. Uh, call volume, as I've spoken a few times, is up over 15% compared to last year. And I'm going to say it seems as though more so this year than previous years. Of those 15% over, I'm going to say 10 or so are lift assist only which we do not bill for. Um, it's just get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, help somebody up, and carry on. But this, we seem to be getting, everybody does, and we are too. We're getting quite a few more of those. Um, membership, I guess uh, the car show, Ron did, retired Ron DeMar's uh, chief, uh, did drive Ano to the car show. Um, the good news, so we talked last month about Josh Fenske taking the National Registry exam for the EMT. He did pass his exam. And also Kelsey Hookey and Trevor Kosky passed their Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2 state exam. Those aren't easy exams, so 
a big congratulations to them. Um, what else? Oh, the only the, our ambulance. I know we talked briefly last month about um, maintenance on our vehicles going up. It's not quite as bad as we thought. We had them look at some different things, and they looked at some different things. Um, but we uh, replacing that ambulance is a top priority, and we tried. As you know, we cannot order one until we hear from AFG if we've been um, if we were granted the, an award or not. Um, we tried maybe ordering it, possibly looking at a demo, but there's no such thing. They're gone. You know, nobody, nobody has them today. Um, so when we do order it, if we were to order it day one, which probably won't happen either, um, it'll probably be a year and a half, two years out before we could get it. If we were to order one, and I'm looking, I'd like to get a demo. Nobody has them. People are calling us asking us to buy our ambulances, and I wish I could say yes, <laughs> but we can't. Um, just a uh, jet ski is in the Upper Harbor again this year. And the Mark County Firefighter Association is talking about joining Mabus. It's a um, mutual aid box alarm system. It's something they're doing downstate quite a bit. Um, I guess Menominee does it. Iron County, I believe, also is involved with it. And it's something we're sort of doing now, but it's guaranteeing that we will have a response in a, if a major incident were to occur. And there's possibly some funding associated with that if we did have a major incident in Market, in Market County, but Market Township, um, there possibly could be some funding, relief funding, or, or we'll get help from resources from all over the state, but they're so far away. That's why Marquette's never really been involved, but we are talking about doing it just because of the possibility of getting some training funding and um, if there was a major incident, getting some relief money. Are there certain incidents that are considered major? Like you know, and that I, we, we've just talked about it, you know, and I believe Menominee County had one. Um, he happens to be pretty high up, though, with the State Fire Marshal's division. Uh, what's his name? Iron Mountain. But um, they had one down there recently, and actually it was just a, that lumberyard fire. I don't know if you remember that not too long ago, but they considered that one. And I didn't know if that was, you know, I didn't, but I guess it, that one was considered. And you can get resources, and a lot of the resources are in Gaylord, so they're four hour, only four hours away. But for anything, you know, you have a bunch of people jumped over the, the cliff or whatever, you know, that will send resources to help. I mean, it's a good thing, and we're sort of doing that now. But we we're finally in that stage where we're going, yep, let's talk about it. You know, we might need that help someday. We don't think we do, but we do. We could, and plus the financial part of it. And there's no commitment, but there would be a signature required from somebody at some point to say, yes, we will you know, cooperate and reciprocate if needed. There was just a big incident down just outside of uh, Green Bay, I think yesterday or the day before, a huge, huge farm. And right. Did you see that? Yes. Yep. There must, I think they said there was like eight or ten different Departments that oh, responded they would, to it. Right. If, yeah. we, if there's something large like that, and Wisconsin's been doing it for quite a few years. I'm going to say 15. Yeah. Michigan has, but we're, it's sort of more downstate in the bigger metropolitan areas. Um, but no, it, it can be a good thing. You're right. Something big like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That means it's, it's automatic. You know that whoever that I see is enough to go, oh, can I get Sands? Can I get Republic to come? You know, no, you say, you know, Three box alarm, you know, they're Boom. coming. The central yeah. knows who to call and who to bring, and so, you no, know, it can be a good thing. We just never had. I won't even say, but you know, might not ever be needed, but it can be a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Good insurance. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Ernie. Uh, I keep thinking the jet skis in the Upper Harbor. The rationale for putting it down there. Time, and we've timed it. Um, it's sort of a win-win. We, most of ours are going to be up at Little Presque Isle, and by the time we haul it out of the station up there, and then we, there's no place really to launch it at Little Presque Isle. We've practiced doing that, um, but it's very difficult to do. And then getting out of the water, of course, we have to drive it back to the upper harbor. But um, it's, it's a time 
think timing. It's quicker for us to drive there and drive the jet ski up. And it's not just Little Presque, it's Hidden Beach and uh, Partridge Bay Island. You know, we have instances out there. So it's, just, it's a win-win. If the city were ever, ever needed for any reason, emergency, it's there. So yeah, works out well. I just happen to think we haven't seen, because you were talking about some of your employees getting, you know, kudos. Oh yeah. We haven't seen some of your people lately. Yeah, no, Not we can. Um, summertime is very difficult. Everybody okay. is busy. Okay. Um, and I try, you probably, I think Josh Fenske is probably the one. You, I know you met the other, no, just the girl, I believe, that you'd met. Yeah, we, we'll bring them in. Okay. Yeah, and it's congratulations. That, those, are, those are difficult tests. They are. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of time they put in. You know, they've got over 200 and what 40 hours for probably both of them maybe a little more some people did more with clinical that's than that. classroom time that's not that's classroom and then there's time. out there's clinical yeah. time then study time and they put a lot a lot of time in to get these you know so you no know, kudos to both or it's all three of them i was just thinking too the jet ski if it ever had to go down to chocolate it's exactly. we've it's timed true. that too yeah we have you know, as long as it's under a foot and a half, you know, we get bigger than two foot and a half, well, I don't know if we're going anyway. Right. You know, but you're right, and we have. We, we've timed that also. Because you know, it's by the time you drive it and go, you know, you know how that, then you got to launch, and you got to launch at the, in Chocolate. Their oh, launch was the river. The river there. Yeah. <laughs> and then get back out, and it's quicker just to shoot over. So, no, it's worked out well. Any questions for the chief? Good. Okay. okay. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thank you. Mr. Lenny. Hello, everyone. Um, first, going to wastewater. Uh, we in the past we had an issue with our Center Street lift station uh, with the generator project. We found out that the proper easements had not been recorded. Uh, so we had over the last couple months here, we've been working on that and we finally got the issue resolved. So that project is ready to be bid out for the generator. Um, right now, the, the bid documents are at the grant administrator and he's uh, looking them over and we anticipate that those will come back good here. However, uh, it's looking like there's gonna be some delays even with that with uh, you know the equipment and the generator and stuff. So like everything else in our world, it seems uh, that uh, that's gonna be probably delayed uh, Due to having a hard time getting um, the equipment to actually do the project so but we are moving forward with that and we're hoping keeping our fingers crossed that that will be uh, hopefully uh, moving here pretty fast within the next uh, month or two and hopefully we'll have that generator installed by the winter time uh, our sewer cleaning is ongoing our guys uh, did get Trover's Park finished uh, for the sewer cleaning uh, they also went and they uh, inspect their interceptor which runs from uh, the township all the way down through the city to Front Street. So we do uh, are responsible for that interceptor as well. Uh, everything looked pretty good there. We did find a couple uh, issues that will have to be addressed here in the near future, uh, primarily under Washington Street that will have to be cleaned. And we did find some roots in one of the manholes there by uh, Marth Aller. So um, we, we already got that set up to get fixed here. Hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll, we'll get that all tidied up and cleaned up and we sh hopefully keeping our fingers crossed again, we won't have to worry about it. Um, we had an ongoing uh, communication issue going at one of our lift stations. I had to bankrupt the station, but it was actually here on. Um, we feel that it's an older modem, so I know we were talking about technology earlier. Uh, those modems have been in there for, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven, eight years now, and they're kind of getting uh, old and behind the times. So we do have a new one on order, and we're hoping to get that here very soon, and we'll be able to get that installed. So the problem with that was that the communication was dropping out a lot at certain times during the day. Um, so basically it would drop out, call, call somebody saying my communication's out, and then was calling saying it was coming back. So it was actually, it's actually been dropping out about two to three hours uh, at a crack here during the day. So that's something that we want to get resolved pretty fast. And hopefully when that new modem comes in, we'll be able uh, to get that resolved. Uh, and the water part, uh, our water operator continue, continues to collect required samples. Uh, so he's been going through making sure all our samples are done for eagle requirements. Uh, to date, we continue to have good, clean water. So that's really good. So, I mean, our water is very high quality. It's 
up the standards, up the par, beyond par sometimes. So we do have very good water. Um, we have been continuing with our water line, uh, our water service line inventory. Uh, we actually developed uh, some leaks on the hydro excavator. Uh, some of the hose fittings uh, ended up leaking on us. So that machine right now is in for service to get those fittings repaired. And that's all warranty work, which is good. Um, so once we get that back, we'll, we'll start going again on that, that survey. We're anticipating having, uh, hopefully, well, we were anticipating having 75, uh, 75 of them done this summer. This is gonna put us back a little bit, but that's okay. We still have a few years uh, to complete this survey. Uh, the water connection at the Heritage Silo subdivision had been, has been completed as of last week. So the water main is in there, the connection is made, all the proper testing uh, and the procedures uh, were done. We have all the permits, so uh, that's good. So we're moving forward on that project. Uh, for solid waste, our first Wednesday rubbish drop-off has been going well. Um, so we did we did uh, put some, uh, as everybody knows, put some controls in there. Um, it's been going off, going well. We've had a few customers who have um, gotten there late, and the, the dumpsters had already been filled. So, but that hopefully is a rarity. Uh, we haven't encountered that too much. Uh, so we're we're trying to keep keep it managed well, and try to be very efficient out there. Try to use the space very efficiently. Uh, the total roll-offs used is below last year's level, which is really good. So um, that, that seems to be working and we seem to be getting a handle on that situation. Um, our building and ground crew were able to mold the wildflower pilot strip that's in front of Crystal Oil, so that went well. We do have a permit for that and we just have to give them advance notice and get some signs and stuff set up uh, for MDOT. Uh, so we're making sure we're out there, we're being safe, we have all our proper equipment and we're able uh, to get in there and get it mowed. So we got our first mowing in. I believe we have to get another mowing in, I think uh, maybe this month or next month. Um, and so we'll continue with that, uh, doing the, the steps that we need to do for that pilot pro project. And our staff has been busy uh, with the, I got routing, but it should be routine, uh, ball field and facility maintenance. Um, now, kind of going back to the lawnmower issue uh, with mowing and stuff like that, I know that you, I think you all have the, the packet there of that lawnmower. Uh, kind of Lenny, going back to the generator and everything else that we have going on. Uh, Lenny, I only shared the uh, the price quote with them, so they don't have the full specs or anything. The lawnmowers must be a hot commodity because they are way behind. So we originally were supposed to get it in May, and then we went to June, then we went to July, and now, and now the new estimated time to get it is August. Uh, so, um, what we did do is I did look around for lawnmowers, uh, brand new lawnmowers that are actually on site at different dealerships and I did find a Gravely that is comparable to the one that we had spec'd out. I think it's a, a tick higher model, it's a commercial model and it's a 52 inch. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger, not too bad, nothing that we don't feel that we can handle. We did uh, take some measurements and all, I think we have a three trailers or whatever, and one of them can't actually handle it. It's just kind of an overkill for, for a lawnmower, but it still should be sufficient to haul something like that around. So basically what we're, what we're doing is coming to the board and saying that um, there is a lawnmower that is available. It is in Bell by the Green Bay area. It is a brand new one with all the proper warranties and everything, and it will meet our needs commercial. Um, you know, could we meet it? But the only problem is it's, $700 more expensive than what was approved. Um, you know, so we we're looking at, is it something, do we can, do we go down and get this one that we know is already on site? Um, do we cancel the order that we already have? Uh, I did put in the CIP for another lawnmower for next year because we are <coughs> anticipating um, taking on more lawn mowing duties potentially on the highway, on the mate or the, uh, the bike path area there. There's, there's mowing that has to be done there. And of course we have all our other uh, areas that we have the most. So, I mean, um, so I guess it would be obviously up to the board, you know, what what direction would we, would the board want us to go and uh, get this one, potentially cancel the order that we have, get this one, keep us on the list for the order for potentially either getting it in August or, you know, whenever it comes. John, do you want to add anything? My recommendation would be to authorize this purchase knowing that it's sitting on a floor and available today it might not be next week or at your next meeting so we can get them a good machine that we don't have to worry about breaking down every time they use it 
the one they have is is tired that's why we ordered one in january that we don't know if we're going to get this year <coughs> when that second one that we already ordered in january comes in we use that as the replacement for what Lenny was going to put in the CIP next year and we actually get ahead of the game for 2023 that's my recommendation you don't have to go that route there is the other option Lenny recommended which would be to cancel that first order because they'll probably be able to sell it but then we're going to go through this all over again next year I think this is another one of those opportunities only it's a brand new mower it's not used pickup trucks off a lot like we did last time right where we have to fill the void and doing it now we're, we're looking at less than ten thousand dollar purchase here I could have done it myself but you know I don't like doing those kind of things I would rather have your support in doing it before moving forward okay Linda so, so um I, I have to say I, I would really support this because I think uh, by continuing to wait we're probably spending more than seven hundred dollars in labor costs that we would be able to reduce does that make sense we have people cutting the lawn yes. so your efficiency of using a bigger mower will save you seven hundred dollars in labor costs where that labor can then be doing something else that does that make sense? Okay, so I would support buying I it. I ballparked a thousand dollars a month with Lenny earlier today. Yeah, see, so you already. Um, I, I'm not sure about buying two, but I'm not sure about not buying two. So, okay, Dan. Lenny, I was just wondering. Um, you're talking about warranty. If we had to do warranty on this mower from south of Green Bay. Um, or if we bought it from South of Green Bay, do we have to bring it back down there for, then for warranty work? I, I don't believe so. I believe there are, there are, there's preferred Greenway dealers in the UP as well. So I think they're kind of like trucks and cars. You can, as long as it's a Greenway dealer, you can bring it to get your warranty work down there. So, so if we have a Greenway dealer locally, they, they also do the warranty work on it. Okay. So the Gravely that you authorized to purchase back in January would be purchased from OK Industrial in Ishpeming. There's also another dealer in Escanaba. So there's two options that are closer than this location. Neither of them have a lawnmower sitting on the floor that we could purchase today that I would recommend purchasing. So. Ernie? So what you're saying is to continue to keep on order what we have right now and to add this one as a new purchase. Do we have the dollar set aside to handle this? We have plenty of unanticipated revenues this year that I recommend we go to for that. And if you authorize this, we'll have to bring you another budget amendment at your next meeting or within a month to uh, change a line item in the CIP or the, the um, I'm drawing a blank on the actual title in the budget itself, but it, it's capital purchase. Um, there is there is money in the budget right now to purchase this. There just won't be when the other one comes in. So do you guys want a motion to address both of them? How do you, you know, if, you know, if somebody wants to make a motion that just says go ahead and buy this, do you want a subsequent motion for the second one so that we have a plan or do you want to just wait well the second one is already technically approved yeah it's just we're waiting for it so i think the appropriate motion would be is just to purchase this one and keep the other one in in the fire and then don't even one. address the first one just yeah, this, it as is. that's yeah. what i wanted to make sure so if you authorize this purchase then we would come back to you with the budget amendment and it would come from the fund balance where all those additional revenues went it's just there's nothing earmarked for lawnmower in the fund balance currently so move i'll support I'll say, okay. okay any other questions so the motion will be to approve the purchase from joe's power center in kimberly wisconsin for a lawnmower 52 inch for a not exceed price of eight thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars and zero cents we have a motion for that. Okay. 
Anything else? I just have one thing to add. Um, I will request Kim cut a check on this because there would be a 2% service fee to, to charge it. So we'll save that 2% and uh, that means we would need signatures tomorrow. That works. So do they deliver or do we, re do we go get it? We would go down there and get it. So we could leave early in the morning, get down there, get it, turn around and come right back that same day. So that would just be my, my, that wouldn't be, that would just be paid time. We wouldn't be paying anybody any overtime or anything because right. that's yeah, an additional cost. Okay. Right. So it's a matter of if it happens tomorrow or Thursday, probably. Yeah, too bad. Meet me in the middle. <laughs> anything else? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, Ernie? I have one question for Lenny. Uh, we talked about the modems uh, yes. for the one lift station. What about the other lift stations? Do, should we be considering replacing those modems at this point in time? Yeah, that is actually one thing I was going to bring up with our technician is about those modems. Um, I got to go through. Some of them were replaced uh, a couple years ago, so I got to make sure that those ones are still capable. A lot of it has to do with uh, the upgrades, I believe, to like uh, the 5G and stuff. Uh, if you, mm -hmm. There has been some people, if you notice, they've been working up at our uh, Cox Water Tower. So I think eventually the other ones will have to be replaced as well, um, just because everything, I think the 5G is coming in the, the other modems were like 3G and 4G and stuff like that. So, but that's all part of the, the service contract that we do have with our uh, IT people. I would suggest that you look at that and maybe get a bulk order if you can do it. Maybe save a few dollars. I don't know. It may not even be possible. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I will. I will broach that subject with them when I talk to them. I think I'm going to talk to them again tomorrow, so I'll, I will talk to them about it. Okay. You're good. All right. Thanks, Lenny. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next up is community linkage. Oh, Roger first. Oh, Roger, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got so much red on here. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, well, as Lenny mentioned, we had <clears throat> this easement with the Center Street lift station that was holding everything up, and that's more than your just routine little easement issue that we have many, many times a year. Um, this one involved easements on top of easements, and uh, there is actually equipment located where the easement needs to be already. And uh, it took some considerable negotiation and discussion back and forth, just getting it in a format with content that everybody found livable. And uh, we're happy to report that happened within the last 10 days. So that's, um, it's filed at the Register of Deeds and that's behind us. Um, it apparently was an oversight as part of the sewer improvements many years ago um, that everybody thought there was one and there wasn't. Um, we've also been working on, speaking of easements, on uh, easements with the PUD, the planned unit development on Grove Street, and uh, trying to keep the Lost Creek complaint moving forward, but every time I get to that, we get something more pressing that needs to be dealt with immediately. Um, we have a contingent purchase agreement that we drafted for the uh, Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant that uh, has been the topic of ongoing discussion. We are not allowed to commit to actually purchasing property until the grant is awarded, if it's awarded, and it has to be contingent upon that. So we have some language back and forth that we need to um, probably negotiate with the sellers on that as well, but that's in a format that uh, I find acceptable to the township at this point, and uh, there'll be more discussion, I'm sure, by the next meeting on that one. Um, the Lake Enchantment Road property issue is, uh, um, is still out there. The uh, property owner, as you'll recall, there were three property owners. One of them agreed to clean it up by June 1st. And we were hoping that we would at least see some substantial improvement or headway, and there has not been. So we're um, 
dealing with the uh, zoning administrator in the absence of the uh, uh, Eric being on leave at the moment uh, on what the next step is, and we just conferred on that today. But uh, basically, that will probably involve the township um, getting estimates on having it cleaned up. And then the settlement agreement, one of the property owners indicated that if he needed to, he would pay or reimburse to uh, clean that up. Um, so that's an ongoing issue and problem as well. We have uh, two new tax tribunal matters. Um, had a couple of interesting FOIA requests, one of them relating to um, still going back to the 2020 elections with security measures and so forth. We had to formulate a response on that. Um, that's what I was able to think of as I was uh, on my way here. There's probably a few more items that I overlooked, but uh, that's a summary of at least part of what since the last report. He's also been involved in the discussion regarding this 425 agreement, too. That's correct. I attended um, the city of Marquette meeting uh, that uh, involved this potential project as well. Okay. Um, I sent that, I think, did you send it down, Randy? That um, tribunal? you tell me who that is? I was going to catch you before the meeting, but the public can know, right? Or oh, They can know. Um, this is a repeat one. I will have to look. Okay. I, asked, I asked the, this just came in to me at least a couple of hours ago from the assessor, and I've uh, requested copies of the assessment cards and so forth, which would answer uh, that and several other questions. And I, she just hasn't had a chance to get those yeah. to me. I think it was about 3 o'clock. So we had board of review today, too. Emailing her. Oh, well, that would explain where yeah. she was. Probably. She was doing that. Yeah. Hmm. And we had just gotten a notice from the state Friday, I think it was. Or, yeah, it must have been Friday that we weren't allowed to do PREs this year. Yeah, so yeah. she kind of had to jiggle some stuff around today because we had some. Those will go to the county now. Second one I mentioned were two. The other one is Red Lobster. But that's a, um, a small claims tribunal proceeding, and typically the assessor handles those directly. So. All right. Any questions for the attorney, Linda? I do. Um, the Planning Commission um, would like to get on your list of helping us out on um, an issue. And I'm sure okay. Jay, I'm sure Jason can get you that information. Then. Okay, I have to talk to Jason tomorrow morning anyway. So, so I will make a well, note you to say yeah. Mm -hmm, the planning commission has a question you for you. In. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Sure. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Now community linkage. Anything to share? Anything you're hearing from the public? I have a few things um, to share with you. Uh, John and I went through the Michigan, Michigan Township Association salary survey, so I'll be able to present that, those, those answers to you, where we rate in comparison to the rest of the officials in the state that have also filled out the survey. So we'll talk about that during the budget. Um, and I did mention, you know, now since we've got a half year's um, financials will be able to do the John can start working more um, closely on the budget uh, I don't know if you look through the financials for the end of the year but most of the cost centers are 35 to 45 percent to budget so that's pretty good we're managing our funds pretty well now there might be some bills that haven't been paid and they only get paid once a year you know how that works some of them are at 100 percent because they've already been paid if it's insurances or whatever but um, we're doing really well, I think, with looking at the financials. Um, John and Ernie and I went to a ribbon cutting at the mall for a new business called Little Eggit. Um, it's a clothing store for children. Um, I was able to find a couple things for my grandson, which was great. <laughs> so we have a new business out there. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. I haven't seen anything on the in the paper but um, 
the partnership, the LSCP is taking was taking care of the ribbon cutting, so they'll make the announcements and pictures. I'm assuming. And then tomorrow, there's a business after hours at Select Realty, who has a new office in our township. It's not uh, ribbon cutting, but it's kind of an open house time, you know, greeting. Um, so anybody that wants to go, it's from 5 to 7 tomorrow. And just, you know, say hi, welcome, have our, our faces out there. It's always a good thing to do. Um, last night, I did uh, the meeting for the Utility Review Committee. It's an annual meeting. and. Um, some of you might remember, and I was going to ask John when you looked at the paperwork today, what year did that start? Or maybe Roger remembers. There was a um, Board of Light and Power does not pay taxes to the city, so there was a PILT that was issued up um, back in lieu of taxes, payment in lieu of taxes. Back in the 90s, I think. Before that, I believe was it? it was around 1982. Wow, oh, long time. Okay. So um, the Board of Light and Power decided that they were going to charge their townships the same, you know, whatever the PILT number was, and I don't, don't have those numbers, but um, the state decided that that was not appropriate because the township was paying a different rate than the city residents were. So because of that, it, my understanding, and I'm going to dig into it a little bit more, um, is that uh, six of the townships got together and said, we need to make sure that if this happens again, we've got some money stashed aside and um, in case for legal or whatever had to be done. There's $149,000 in the account right now, and the group had put a $142,000 limit on the funds, and then anything over that gets distributed every year to the six townships. So last night we made the motions to you know pay the bills basically. So we'll get a 200 or 2000 2400 dollars I think in distribution because of the extra 7000 that's in there. So I asked the group, you know, being kind of new, Randy always took care of it, Randy Gerard, and then I did the first Zoom when he left and then John picked up last year and went to the meeting. And John was busy this year. He, that's on the, that's on the agenda too. Um, but anyway, I digress. My question to them was: Is this group still necessary? Is all of this accounting still necessary? Um, and if it is, which is fine, if everybody feels the six townships feel it's important to continue having the utility review committee, um, then maybe we shouldn't take distributions. Maybe we should just leave the money in there so it builds, you know, above 142. So it's just conversation. Um, and the chair, who is the Nagani Township manager, was elected last night, um, said that he would look into it and get a hold of BLP for next year. And the meeting will be next year again, because this is once a year when they get together and pay the bills, write the checks. Um, he said, he would contact all six townships in the spring, July or um, uh, January to March, somewhere in there, send all the backup information so we all know, get the bylaws and everything that occurred. And as a group, apparently we have to have two thirds majority of the six townships, so that's four roughly, um, to see if anything needs to change. And I don't know if Roger was the attorney of record with the lawsuit, I guess it went to the Supreme Court. It was a big deal. So. It was not Roger, it was the predecessor. Okay. It was not because I wasn't practicing yet then. <laughs> <laughs> but it was That's shortly cool. after that, it had the decision just came down, and I am familiar with okay. it. So, this, you know, I'm, the only reason I'm mentioning this is because it just happened last night. So, next July, when we have this meeting, we'll have a preemptive information for our packets for you know may maybe april somewhere in there with all the backup information uh so that when the july meeting happens that john will probably go to um we can tell them what we think you know get our two cents so i just wanted to give you an update on that because it was kind of fresh in my mind um so you'll see it again next year um one other thing you some of you may have watched the 
forum that was held here with the three candidates, three of the four candidates for Sarah Cambenzi's seat. I guess there was a good sized crowd. I wasn't able to go, I guess Ernie went. Um, but I did, it was recorded, so the uh, Lee Women's Voters recorded it, and I, so I watched it. It was about an hour and a half. And the answers were really good. I was really impressed that they were pretty educated, except for the very last question, which was about the tax tribunal. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty interesting. So, you know, the hair on the back of my neck went off right away. Uh, so one of the candidates said that this problem's already been resolved. It's not a problem. Really? Yeah. Um, <coughs> that, that it had run its course and it was done. Hmm. Um, and that the state is broken financially, so I'm not sure how that plays into it. Another <laughs> candidate said um, that it did affect EMS and the police and that we're funding wealthy people. And the question was, I did write the question down. I thought I did. Okay, the question was, there's a decrease, I, I shortened it, a decrease of municipal revenue. How would you like to see the dark store problem resolved? That was the question. So um, the first answer was that it was all taken care of. The second one was that it was EMS and police. And the third candidate said, it's not just retail, but the power plants, the apartment buildings, hotels, which is true. It's not just the uh, big box stores. Uh, and that they're just asking for their taxes to be reduced. So I'd like to say something to them somehow. <laughs> I'd like to either inter invite them to come and talk to us about it. The, well, like I said, three of the four candidates were there, but um, invite all four of them or write them all a letter or I'm just kind of looking for what you think. If you're not worried, then we'll just drop it. Can they really we, don't know what you're talking about. Can, That's what they don't. Can you send them the article that we sent well, out I to people? I have a folder full of stuff I could send. Well, that's electronic, though. Yeah. It would be quite easy and then yeah. offer there's, to. Yeah, there's quite a bit. I could send them the um, spreadsheet. It's yeah. a great big spreadsheet that the county sends out. I only have probably through 20. I don't think I've gotten 21 yet. And just offer to answer any questions they might have because they... No, invite them here and put them on the spot because yeah, they, they I, are I not... Like that. I like Pete's idea. I they are not <laughs> yeah. idea what it's all about. But I don't want to sit here and listen to that. I mean, do you know, do you want it an open forum for anyone to come and listen to? Because I don't you know that... Meeting. No, I mean, just at a board meeting. Give them, oh. you know, privileged comment. Mm. They don't have a clue. Yeah, I don't know that they would. It's not going away, and that it's a go. big issue for us. Well, you just found out there's another one tonight, so what Roger brought up. Another two. Well, he only brought up one, though. He wouldn't tell you the other one. I know. So what do you think? Ernie? I was sat in a meeting, and it was fine up until the last question. I just sat there and started laughing. They had no oh, idea what it was all about. I said dark stores, and there was... Hmm. I would have to say they were dark in their mind because they had no idea what was going on in that. Now, I don't think sending them anything now, send it to the individual who gets elected. Is elected. That's oh, the individual. That's the probably. That. Right now it's too late. And, that, and uh, whoever goes downstate is going to have to be up on it. And how much they can do, I think uh, Convenzi found out that there isn't a heck of a lot they can do. You only got three representatives and a, and a senator representing us down here. You got everyone downstate. If they don't make co coalitions with an area downstate, especially on the Detroit area like Jacob Eddy did, you're not going to get anything down there. In that. Mm -hmm. so, but if but, I was Lynn, I would send a letter and just tell them that their lack of, of information. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would wait until who's elective and we can educate them. Yeah, yeah I agree. Educate one instead of four. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. No. I appreciate mm -hmm. your input because it's not going away and it's costing us attorney time, mm -hmm. legal time, and money. Stage, everything, office time, our talking time. It's costing our schools and our libraries and our law enforcement, and they're not out there beating the drum. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, okay. We'll wait and see who gets elected and we'll talk about it again. Okay, thank you, appreciate that.
I like to still put them on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you invite them to breakfast. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll find out who they are. I'll put them on the spot. Okay. Who were they, Lynn? <laughs> um, it has to be public. It's, you know. Yeah. Can we see this Melody? film again? Yeah, I or, can send it, it to you. Okay. It's okay. an email link, yep, to the League of Women Voters. Melody Wagner. Oh, Melody. Joe Bugrin. Yeah. And Jen Hill. And the fourth gentleman wasn't there. I can't remember his name. It's Gary. Oh. Ron Gray. Ron, Ron Gray. Ron. Gray. Ron. Ron. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send that out to you. It's the last question if you want to fast forward, but their answers were good. I mean, and they weren't all good answers, <laughs> so I think. <laughs> but they, they did it, they were on the spot, because they didn't get the questions ahead of time either. Okay, 8A, MTA dues for next year. I think that's got them. Um, 7,000, you can see the invoice. The total that's being requested is 7,111.86. And we did agree last year to accept the extra online premium pass. I would be curious who is using that, if anybody, because that's for the staff, that's the planning commission, that's our committees, anybody. And when they have, actually when I get emails about specific classes, I send them out. You might remember I've sent some to you. I've sent them to the planning commission, make sure the road committee gets them and all of that. Um, but I don't know if anybody's using it. I used one. I've used it a couple of times. Classes that would normally cost us a fee that were actually free as a premium member. I don't know that we're covering our entire premium membership. That's what I'm wondering. Membership. $1,900 is a lot, and it's a great benefit, but we've got to use it too. So I didn't use any. I would suggest let's do it one more year, and if we don't get any one using it, any of the groups, then we, next year we consider seriously not dropping it. That too. So let's push the for one more year and then be done with it. And that too. So and I've seen a couple of them, and I did not take the necessary steps to do it. And there's a couple of them that were very interesting to me for a stranger, and I didn't do it. That's my fault. Too. Okay. <coughs> Question? I'll make the motion to approve the invoice for the 2022-23 MT. A dues of seven thousand one hundred eleven dollars and eighty six cents. Support. Okay. Comments, suggestions. How much were they last year? They're probably similar. I don't have that on there, but it was probably similar. I don't think they went up tremendous amount. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So 711186. Okay, appointments to the Utility Review Committee. Mr. John, or did that, does this have my name on it? I think I put that one in the packet after you and I discussed it. And really what it comes down to is making it official who is going to represent Marquette Charter Township on the Utility Review Committee. and. I think you have both Lynn and myself that are willing to commit to this basically one meeting a year commitment. Um, this year worked out in that I hadn't been appointed to anything and I was kind of busy the night that the meeting was held so Lynn agreed to do it anyway. She had previously been the alternate I believe. For Randy. Yeah. So it's time to just make it official who's going to be the designee and the alternate. Uh, whether it's Lynn or myself as, as the primary, I don't care either way, but um, I guess Lynn can tell you how she feels about it. No, I don't care either. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I make a motion to appoint John Tangus for primary and you secondary. Support. And it is a four year term. John looked that up today just to make sure. So. Are you going to include the supervisor as the alternate then? Yes. yes. Yeah. Questions, comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, authorize the township attorney to draft and negotiate terms of a 
EPA 425 agreement. So be with the, the language city. in that title is my words. Roger may prefer to tweak it a little bit based on what he thinks is the most appropriate way to approach this, but ultimately we need to draft an agreement and negotiate the terms of that agreement with the city of Marquette, having met with their administration and legal office, I, we all believe this is the best way forward. And it's really to benefit both municipalities by allowing this residential development to expand across the township city line from the township into the city. Roger, comments? Um, no, at this point, I would not present anything to the city uh, before presenting it to this board. So I'm not sure that the term negotiate should be in there. I would not really be negotiating anything because I don't have authority, I don't believe, to do that. I would draft, I think I have a pretty good concept of what was discussed and what terms would probably be acceptable to both sides, and I can put something together would present that back to this board before it gets presented to the city. Okay. And who would present it to the city then? Do you would you do that? Or give it to their attorney? Or? Matter of hit, hitting send to their township to okay. their city attorney. Okay, I didn't know if it had to be official or. Okay. Well, it will have to be presented to the city commission as well for approval. But uh, uh, the communication chain would be between the two attorneys essentially. Does this motion to address that the way it's laid out? Take the term negotiate out of there, so allow him I, I to draft out. it. I leave the rest in. Yep. And just so everyone knows, I did talk to Dulcie on this, and she tends to agree with what we believe is the best way forward on how revenues are captured by the township and distributed to the city would be based on assessed value. So I think that's the cleanest way to do it Dulcy agrees so that's that's what we will I think we should be asking our attorney to be drafting into this agreement okay. John I think we need this document that will embody the terms and conditions of a, this partnership that we're on the cusp of. so I move to authorize the township attorney to draft and ne negotiate no, 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 no. and pull out. I authorize the township attorney to draft a public act 425 agreement with the city of Marquette for the proposed residential PUD. What else? Anything? Just so we're clear here, <laughs> what is Public Act 425? And also, where is this land? I see a nice little map, but I don't see it documented as to what street this is. So it's on Forestville Road. Forestville Road, Correct. okay. And as presented, the acreage of the two parcels approximately 80% of the acreage is in the township and the remaining 20 is in the city. If you look at the numbers they present as far as units and mm -hmm. square footage, you're gonna be plus or minus one or 2% either way, depending on how you look at it. But the agreement would be based on assessed value, so none of that really matters too much. Just from a ballpark, 80% of the tax revenue would probably stay here Mm -hmm. and about 20% would go to the city. Because the 20% the is land in the city? Correct. Okay, and is this the development that Longyear is talking about? Yes. And Forestville Road, the straight line is developed already? The power line right there. It's a what? Power line is running right along here. So there's no road? Forestville Road runs along the west property line of the parcel in the township. Only so in the, the township. The blue line on the left side of the map 
on the left side of the map, the, the turquoise line. This uh, line? Teal, whatever color Turner that is. is yeah. Right there. That's yeah, Forest I got Hill it. Road. I, I mean, I, I, I get it now. But it, it's not documented on here what it is. The reason why you have a very vague map is because they have not submitted a PUD ap okay. application yet. Okay, so just so we're clear. They want to know that the communities are working together to achieve this 425 agreement so that they can submit their, their PUD application with both parcels included. I see, okay. That, there's significant amount of effort to include that 20% that's in the city. And where will the traffic enter into this PUD? From Forestville Road. You're asking a lot of questions that we are not at liberty to talk about yet because we do not have a formal PUD application in front of us. Okay, and you can just say that to me. The, the public access currently is Forestville Road. Okay. But you, right. you will recall at a prior meeting, we talked about the road commission requesting funding to build an additional road that would give a new point of access to County Road 492 south of the existing intersection with Wright Street. It would be almost directly across from the Montessori School. North Star. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, PA 425 is just an agreement? Public Act 425. It allows municipalities to enter into these agreements for a period of up to 50 years, and it can be extended with agreement of both communities. Okay. And the terms of that agreement really dictate what the agreement is for, and really what this allows the applicant to do is submit one application to one municipality, not two separate in applications to both municipalities, so one to us and one to the submit city. Submit it to the township. Correct. Okay. Right. So, so the township would be the tax collecting agency, and then the revenues that are collected on properties in the city would be dis distributed to the city, but it's only at the township's tax rate because it's collected at our rate. We're not going to reimburse them at their operating millage rate. So the residents would be charged at our rate? Correct. Okay. So the challenge there for the city, of course, is do they want to enter into this agreement at a much lower millage rate than they could at their own? I believe yes, because the property otherwise likely will never be developed because of the zoning that's on it in the city. Okay, that, all right, I still have more questions, but we'll, we'll wait to there, there's see. There's going to be public hearings, the planning commission's mm -hmm. gonna have a whole bunch of time. You're gonna end up knowing more about it than me because you sit in those planning commission meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, yeah, I couldn't figure out where the road was. Not there. Well, the Do you want to add um, We're not going to tell you. One other point just regarding uh, Public Act 425 is a Michigan statute that provides a means of cooperation between two adjoining or abutting municipal entities. And they're used occasionally and uh, frequently when there are utilities, for example, when it doesn't make sense to run seven miles. Mm -hmm from one direction, you can come a mile and a half from the other direction. That's one of the more common uh, types of 425 agreements. But an important factor of that is while a 425 agreement is in place, generally there is no concern about annexation mm -hmm. because annexation is prohibited under state law as long as there is a 425 agreement in place. Okay. That's good to know. Anything else? Oh. To follow up on uh, Rogers, we have a 425 already in the township with sand. That's correct. That was strictly because of annexation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's down off of, um, well, down near the ski hill. Yeah. Uh, did you have your hand up too? Yeah, I, I just wanted to comment that we're on the cusp of very serious involvement 
it's going to involve cooperation with the city and cooperation with the city with the township and I think we need to take a deep breath and take this step that puts things on the road to being a plan that we can look at and find the answers to the questions that are going to be asked. There's a tremendous number of, there's amount, a tremendous amount of learning to go on with this because it's a very complex plan. It, but it, I don't want to deplete the importance of realizing this is an extremely good thing for the township and it's going to be a good thing for the city if they're smart enough to buy it. And I think we just need to take this step and then take a deep breath and come back when we got some paper to look at and ask questions. I think the questions are in order, but they need to be, they need to follow when we can point to something that says this is what the plan involves. And I wanna take a minute to say that I think this is really, a, a, we're on the cusp of doing something really great for the residents and the taxpayers of this township. And we need to just be careful about it. We need to be extremely careful to protect all the interests of everybody involved. And I am convinced, watching what's gone on today, that our manager and our supervisor and our township clerk have all had a hand in making sure that this is being done properly. There won't be a step taken that won't have everybody's interest involved. And it won't be a step taken that hasn't involved everybody's thoughts. So just relax. We got a great thing going, and I'm not sure everybody's gonna wake up to how great it is, but think about it. It's a development of a extremely large piece of property and everything west of it is in the township. So when they're through with that one, they've got, the, and one other comment I, get, I get, can't let go by. This application, if it's made, is surely going to be supportive of the request that has been made for a grant for a new road and new turn roundabout. We're on the cusp of doing something really good that we'll all be proud of. And I encourage you to be supportive. All right, thank you. Over flowers. I, I don't know that I could I could say things um, any better than that without turning into a politician because as an administrator we have to look at it in terms of what policies we have in front of us to enforce right the biggest thing for everyone to understand is they're proposing a planned unit development here which means your normal zoning requirements get pushed to the side to the benefit of a different type of, of development than what you would otherwise be able to put there. Mm -hmm. And really, I can tell you it would be more cluster style homes to preserve the majority of 
of what's there relatively untouched today, right? So that's not to say that what they come in and propose ends up being what the township ends up finally approving, but it's certainly what they're hoping to develop because there's gotta be some sort of cash flow mechanism in this, right? They'll say at this number of units, we have to walk away because we won't generate profit. That's what these mm -hmm. developers do. <coughs> we have an idea of what that might look like, but we don't know exactly what it will be until they submit it to us and it gets approved. And PUDs require public hearings, so everybody that's, that will be impacted is gonna have a say in it. So it's much more than just a typical site plan review that goes through the planning commission, goes through the township board, and they build it. So it, it's certainly a project that will take a big chunk out of the housing issues we have here in the county. 240 housing units on 160 plus acres. It's a big deal. The majority is in the township. 80% of it, plus or minus, is in the township, correct. That's not to say that what's going on in the city isn't important as well. They've got their own project with the old hospital property. I think both of them, assuming the economy supports both of them and they happen, will take a lot of pressure off of the housing concerns that we're hearing today. Yeah, motion and support, correct? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, manager Exciting project. Mm -hmm. Right? As you know, do you want to do this or? Yeah, I can do this. So, as the, uh, so we're at 8D manager evaluation compilation for 2022. I sent out the evaluations early July. Everyone got it back to me within the last two weeks. So I compiled them and the results are on the next page. So our manager ended up with out of a scale of five where one is poor and five is excellent. He ended up with a 4.57, which is above a good rating. So by that evaluation rating that qualifies the manager for uh, a performance bonus as all other employees get, but his catch is he has to get above a good performance in order to qualify for that. So he has met that criteria and I'll make a motion to accept the results of the manager evaluation that are compiled and authorize the performance bonus to be paid to the township manager in the first pay period in August. And that performance bonus is 2.5% of his base wage, which equates to $2,387. Support. And that's before taxes, so you won't get all that. Uh, Ernie? The performance is a flat of dollar amount and not going to go against the base wage. But yeah, it's 2.5 percent. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? I'd just like to say that in the short term that he has been our manager, I for one am very pleased on the job that he has done, and proud to have you on board, John. Thank you. Ditto. I guess. I guess, for me, I guess this is your opportunity, John, to say anything to the board about that. I just, yeah. I just no want pressure. to say thank you for your confidence in me, and I will try my hardest not to let you down. Where are we going for dinner? <laughs> Remember my saying when I told you. I'll learn how to say it nicer than you. Um, okay. We and and that support. also, it is budgeted in the manager's of a line item, so it will not have to. Not going to take a uh, budget, budget amendment. amendment. No. Okay, you did get support, right? I did, yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Thank you. Okay. Committee updates, not we already did those last time. Public comment? Oh, do you want planning, planning, planning. commission? Planning. Yeah, didn't we do that the last meeting? We do no. it every meeting. Yeah, no. <laughs> lucky, lucky planning commission, right? Well, it's kind of exciting anyways. Okay. The, so the planning commission met on Wednesday, July 13th at 7 p.m. Um, we had a special use public hearing for uh, proposed tiny homes on some land located at 400 County Road 550. That was approved. Um, they'll be putting, the proposal is to put two tiny homes on a 40,000 square foot parcel. We had a request for a public hearing for a mini warehouse storage um, located in Market Township. We had another special use permit public hearing request for a proposed scientific research facility to be located on, well, it actually it's the um, basement building by the Old Township Hall. Okay, so, um, and then we had a zoning map amendment request for a public hearing, and all three of those public hearings will be held on August 10th. So anyone interested, please attend those meetings. The public hearing request for the zoning map amendment is two parcels of land that um, Jim Ordovero is requesting be made into one parcel of land is my understanding. We also talked about capital improvement program, so the CIP and those will be presented to the Planning Commission at our next meeting on July 27th. So again, interested in knowing what those are, please attend our meeting on the 27th at 7 p.m. And that's pretty much the highlight. Um, we already talked about the Lake Enchantment property maintenance issue. Lynn, Lynn came to our meeting. So I invite all of you to come. It's, um, it, it's kind of exciting sometimes. The room was even full a couple times. It was so, a long meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, long it was a long meeting. Long. Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay. Um, we just did events and work committee. You want to do them again? Do you have more, um, Pete? I just want want to remind people on uh, August sixth at our Lions Field over here <clears throat> from eight in the morning until ten o'clock and and at night. Be a fun day of entertainment. We're going to have ball games, music all day, we have three different bands, the Diversions, the re, uh, Reveals, and the Maynards are playing. We have uh, Super One cooking all day long. So they'll be there providing food, hot dog brats, chips, water, pop all day. And we'll have some play things for the kids. Our playgrounds are there, will be open, and they will have a good time. Fire trucks will be there, police department, I believe, will be there. And uh, it's gonna, it's a great time, you know, the music and that, so come on down, bring a chair, enjoy the music, the ball games, and the food. And so uh, mark your calendars, August 6th, eight in the morning until 10 o'clock at night at the Lions Field. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Okay, we'll comment again. I won't, I won't announce the uh, Christmas thing yet. Okay. Um, July 4th came, and it's been the best year in the township ever. I've been there 22 years, and the fireworks weren't going until 2 o'clock in the morning. It was going, they were usually stopped by 11.30. I mean, it was just fantastic. They went longer than they should have because they were supposed to be the day before, the day of, and the day after. Well, they were going into the weekend, but they were done at a decent time. So we all could get a good night's sleep. I was, so I'm very proud of the township residents for obeying the law. Good, thank you. Thank you. Any announcements from anybody? Randy? Okay, so I'm going to give you a timeline of some things coming up here. We got the August primary 
August 2nd. Um, so July 29th, which is a week and a half from now, um, the last day we can mail out an absentee ballot is that day. So if you don't, if you need uh, to get your application in to get a ballot mailed out, please do so as soon as possible because it's the last day I can do that. The township clerk's office will be open on the Saturday, August or July 30th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that is if you need to register to vote, you need to get an absentee ballot or you want to bring one in. Uh, Monday, the 1st of August, um, everyone that has turned in a ballot absentee has till 10 a.m. that morning to change uh, their vote if they would like. And you can come in and get an absentee ballot till 4 p.m. that day, but it can't leave the building. It has to stay here. So you can come get one, you fill it out, and you have to leave it here. And the second is the, is the election. Polls will be open at 7 a.m. and will close at 8. And as of today, I have out of uh, 1,249 on the permanent AV list, I have um, issued out 665 ballots and 331 have come back. So, um, so about half have I given out. So, primaries are traditionally a little bit slower election because there just, quite frankly, isn't much on there. The only thing that is on there for, of course, the candidates, but then you have uh, the Iron Ore Heritage Trail, uh, Millage Renewal is on that. So. And we have samples of the ballots on the door and on the website. So if you have any uh, questions of what's on the ballot, there's um, you can take a look at the website or come to the township office. There's uh, samples posted on the board. And that's all I have. How many voters are, do we have total in the township? Uh, we have about 3,300 now okay. in that ballpark. Do you want to talk about their that it's um what happens to their ballots if they cross over oh okay so it's a primary so when you vote on the partisan you have to stay in that line you can't cross if you cross it's your ballots going to be well it'll 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 reject it but it, that's the only part of the ballot that won't count if you vote on the iron ore heritage trail that will count but if you cross vote in the primary, that section will not count in the um, results. Do you think that'll ever change? Whatever Michigan decides to do, it's up to Michigan. But I don't know. It's it's just the way that we do things. It's just kind of an. <laughs> the only other way, I guess, is you can do what Iowa does and do um, meet in the corner and figure out your candidate from. Uh, I don't. Know, what do they call it? the caucuses? caucuses. You can. You can all meet in one corner of the room and figure out who your candidate is and move forward. That's how I think Iowa does it. But we do it a different way, and I guess it works for us. So it is kind of archaic, in my opinion. But my opinion also, yeah. But it is what it is, and it this one isn't actually bad. We get to the um, in two years from now when you have the presidential primary. That's actually pretty easy. But then the primary in that year will be same thing you can't cross vote so it takes your vote away though by doing it this way yeah mm -hmm. i don't un as long as i've been clerk that's the way we've done it i don't understand why we do it this way but we do it okay any other announcements manager's report you have my written report which i don't feel that um, inclined to elaborate on too much I will say one of the items in the smorgasbord I gave you this week was trails there is another um, potential item coming up regarding trails for you um, sometime in the near future but it will be by way of the Planning Commission because it involves a special use permit and that is um, team trail riders um, of I think Elger and Marquette County maybe and the DNR are hoping to open trail 8 
to off-road vehicles. It's currently only a snowmobile trail. Um, there's two aspects to that. One, it crosses the 40-acre parcel where we have our test wells for the phase two project if that ever happens. So the township would have to grant access across that 40-acre parcel. Lenny and I were out there today. Um, I don't know that we see any significant issues with it unless that uh, water system ever gets built. In that case, that trail would have to be closed for a season while the water main gets built along it. But that's a separate issue. The other issue is the special use permit would be required for the entire length of the trail within the township. That's already um, stated in our zoning ordinance. Jason's aware of it. We're going to send the information to uh, uh, Tony Harry and Mr. Katona at the DNR and they will work on getting that application in. And eventually that should come to you if it gets through, through the Planning Commission. Uh, just so everyone is aware, Trail 8 is the snowmobile trail that enters the township from Nagani Township um, just east of Morgan Meadows Road, south of 492. It travels eastward into the township and turns south before it gets to Lake Enchantment Road and then it heads down into Sands Township and crosses uh, um, County Road 480 just to the west of Lindbergh's pit. So it, it's in probably one of the least populated areas of the township, but there are several property owners involved there. Um, if they can get approval of all of the property owners, I think that's the biggest hurdle they'll have. Manager? Okay. Thank you. We can review our motion. Okay, so the first motion was to approve the consent agenda as presented. That was approved, roll call vote because of the budget amendment. Second um, motion was to approve the uh, regular agenda as presented. That was approved. The uh, third motion was to approve the purchase of that of the lawnmower um, from Joe's Power Center down in Kimberly, Wisconsin. Or not to exceed amount of 8699. And that was approved. Um, fourth motion was to approve the um, MTA dues. And that was approved. The fifth motion was to appoint the manager as the uh, primary contact for the utility review committee with the supervisor as alternate. And that was approved. Sixth motion was to authorize the township attorney to draft the terms of a, a 425 agreement with the city of Marquette, and that was approved. And the seventh motion was to uh, approve the uh, results of the manager evaluation and approve his uh, performance bonus to be paid in the first pay period of August, and that was approved. Okay. Nothing I have on the agenda for the next meeting but I will remind everybody that because of the August election on the 2nd that we're meeting on the 3rd. Wednesday. Wednesday. So make sure you put that on your calendar and don't, you can come in Tuesday if you're going to vote, but there won't be a meeting. And along with that, uh, my uh, accountant will be gone for that week, so um, Bill's payable. Um, she's working Saturday, so I told her she can get it in Saturday I'll do the packet Saturday afternoon and we'll get that out Saturday afternoon. Since the meeting's on Wednesday, we got a few days, we got extra day. So your next packet will not be out until Saturday afternoon and I'll email it out, and put it in your boxes, so. Okay. The 30th, the 30th, it'll be out. Comments, Ernie? Uh, one comment, uh, with all the sales going on in all the yards and driveways and everything else of that, <laughs> uh, I have a comment maybe to put on the back of the calendar that we send out on a monthly basis and that, asking the people to take down their signs after they're done. Their signs are staying up way too long. In that. Whether it does any good, I don't know. But uh, we just make a little note and see what happens in that. Maybe we'll get a few of them down in that. So I know there's a number of them on the telephone poles and that. They've been there for a good two, three weeks now on that. There's one over on uh, Bear Avenue, and the problem is, the one that put it up, it's Kenny Corner from the, 
from the telephone pole. It's only 20 feet, 30 feet, they can take it on a sign. Yeah, but it's still there. Well, their address is on them, so maybe they should be made aware. Any other comments? Um, yep. So just to kind of follow along with what Ernie just said on the back of the water bill, what I found out when I was um, sharing information about the scenery event, which is tomorrow from 1 to 3, is that the people at Lost Creek don't get a water bill, and the people at the Lutheran home don't get a water bill. So they're not getting any of this information. Mm -hmm. um, so I did hand deliver the back of my water bill to those places. Actually, I took a picture and sent it to someone. And they're going to post it, but I'm not sure if there's an avenue for us to send an e-copy, electronic copy, to people so they can get them posted. Not sure. So that's just my comment, and we can. I just wondered, uh, doesn't the unit itself get a water bill? They do, yeah. I, but you're talking about if, if, Lost Creek, if, some does, big does company. Lost Creek get a water bill? I'm just asking. I don't, I don't know how that works. They do, but it probably goes to MCAB, is my guess, or the management company they have. Okay, well then that's the place that should be pumping out. They're not doing it though, John, oh, that's what's we happening. Can ask that they do it. Well, we can ask somebody in Kentucky or Florida or something to get that information. It would be, in my mind today, it would be just easier for me to scan the document and send it to the two emails. I appreciate your views. I just don't want the township to have to do something special. Well, how many other if people? The, if the management of that organization isn't responsible. Well, it's not just them. How many people in our township don't get water bills? And they're not getting the information. So all the people along the Big Bay Highway that don't get a water bill aren't getting any of the information that we are putting on the back that's so important, and we're always saying, let's put it on the back, they're not getting it. Well, so, well, at some point, though, just they, it. they have to reach out and want to get it also. Well, how will they know that there's such a, an avenue? <laughs> well, you got to be interested. If you're not, then I guess it doesn't well, matter. <laughs> well, part of our goals, part of our planning session that we did with the person was to increase communication with our residents. I remember that. And so we need to think about a way to do this that does not put a burden on anyone or additional responsibilities. So we're going to think about that because that was one of our goals. John has his hand up. Maybe he's got a Maybe he has a solution. Well, <laughs> I guess I just wanted to clarify one little thing in that you don't have to be on the township water or sewer to get a utility bill because you still get a garbage bill. And if you get a garbage bill, you're getting the same paperwork that everyone else is getting because it has the same stuff on the back. So anyone that gets a garbage bill should be getting it. Are they reading what's on the back? We can't force them to do that. Oh, no. You can't. Okay. So it still kind of leaves Lost Creek out because they don't, get the it. residents don't get that. I just recommend whoever the management is there, they can get on our e-blast when we do our, you know, stuff, send their stuff out and they could post it in their community room. Do we e-blast every month? Yeah, pretty much. No, we, no, don't. we don't. I don't get an e-blast. Yeah. <laughs> Only mean, we, when certain things happens. are happening. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so we'll work on that. We but need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. About how we can hit more people. Yeah. Okay. Then I got a question yeah. for you. When you went sure. to the, uh, you already went to the open house or grand opening or whatever, the river cutting, is that who instituted that? Our planning commission or? No, the partnership. Partnership, okay. Remember, that's part of our dues that they're. In I know, but I'm, I just want to the know. The planning that. commission did put on the application that they needed to let us know when they were doing something. Okay. So yeah. you said you're going to have another one then? No. The one tomorrow night is for Select Realty. No, I, I know business that. after hours. Partnership yes. is okay. having, right. Okay, I'm glad it's happening that way anyway. So. Yeah. 
at least we're being included right. with what's going on and then we can you know if we can't make it or we send the manager or nobody goes we well, I just whatever. wanted you know the, we the need talent to be represented usually they're, they're not even included we've been invited to two Lake Superior Community Partnership ribbon cuttings in the township since becoming a member good we were invited to the bank ribbon cutting too across from McDonald's we got the invitation Randy. So one last comment. If you have sent your application in and you did not get a ballot, make contact with me or Kim ASAP because we've got, you know, the app, unfortunately the applications are good, but they're sticky. And sometimes when I run them through the copier, one might stick on the bottom. I had that happen once. So, but since then I haven't had that. So just if you've sent an application in, and you didn't get your ballot just wait a few days because we're getting them all pretty quick but if you don't get it within a week make contact with us okay that's good to know anything else dan um i'd like to make a motion we adjourn okay <laughs> support and we have support all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed aye. <laughs> you want to say 8 11 8 11 8 11 we are adjourned